Hey developers, today we're going to look at Circle CI, which is a really cool tool. It can help you build, test, and deploy your Linux, Mac OS projects from GitHub, Bitbucket, in the cloud, or installed on your servers. So you guys got to really check it out. I'm going to go ahead and set it up with my own project. This is great for Vue, React, Angular projects, really any front-end project you want to do, and back-end projects. It's really versatile. So I'm going to show you how to set that up. We're going to take a look at it. It's pretty neat, so make sure you stay all the way to the end. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I am a full-stack software developer, and I'm also a big Vue.js fan. And one thing that Vue.js uses is Circle CI. And by the way, I just want to let you guys know, Circle CI, you can get it for absolutely for free, up to a thousand free build minutes per month, um, even more for open source projects. And it's just really simple to set up. So what I did here first is I wanna to talk to you guys about Vue.js. So if you look at the pull request in Vue.js, they actually use Circle CI. So if you can see here, you see these little check marks and X's. So this is actually because Vue.js, the repo and circle CI are connected. So if I click here, I could see all checks have passed and I could click this show all checks. And you can see here circle CI is set up and your test passed on circle CI, which means that everything is working and that it all worked great and it passed. So it basically built, it ran the lint flow types, it ran the test coverage, it ran the end to end test coverage and everything passed. And you can even click on the details and it'll show you what it ran. So you can see here it's spun up the environment, checkout code, restoring cache, npm install. And the reason this is important is because when you get into any sort of complex app, and even, even simple apps, you want some kind of tool to integrate into your workflow. That way you're constantly making sure that people aren't pushing up bad code, that all your tests pass, that the build the actual build passes and having something like automatic deployment makes things way easier. Now you could probably do um, in, in a lot of environments, you may want to push to a staging environment. So your users or you can test first before you, you push it to master. So there's a lot of flexibility that you can do here. And I'm going to show you how that's set up and just a real quick sample project that we're going to create. Also, if you look here, at the view project, you can see the way to set up Circle CI is after you um, sign up for it, you can add this dot Circle CI. It integrates directly into GitHub, Bitbucket, like I said before. And here's the YAML file that they have. And this is essentially how it's doing everything. This is in the view uh, repo itself. So it has this jobs, it has this restore cache, it's running npm install. Then it runs like lint flow types, which it runs this npm run lint, npm run flow, npm run test types. And then you can see the test coverage is here where it runs, runs this report coverage stats. So it runs this node module code coverage. You can see it runs the end to end tests. It's running this SSR and, and WeX tests. Um, you can even, every one of these runs right here in your YAML file, is exactly like being on the command line. So you're, you're essentially getting your own virtual environment. This this is downloading everything you need to start with. And then it's each one of these runs are like little command lines that you can run. So for example, this one's running a curl command and it's running with these data parameters and it's doing this regression test tree. And then this is kind of the workflow of it, how it runs. It runs the install test coverage, lint flow types, and then SSR. And then they even have this like weekly regression test set up. So yeah, this is a pretty complicated YAML file. We're not going to go into this much complexity, but it's cool that that uh, Vue.js is using Circle CI and it's it's pretty neat the way it works. The app I want to show you guys is this one. It's called the Vue Real World Example App. I thought it'd be easier to just go ahead and, and clone this from the GoThinkster repo to show you how this works. Now you can set up Circle CI with any app, including ones that you fork. So um, I went ahead and already set this up and I'm gonna show you uh, the steps I took. So by the way, once you run this, I actually set uh, had this up on Firebase. So you can see here, I've got view real world up on Firebase here. And uh, let's say here, here's my 
here is my Visual Studio code. And here is the config YAML file, which I'll, I'll show you guys in a second. But let's say um, I'm on, in this file here, and I'm going to check my, my branch. I'm in master. But I'm going to go ahead and create a new branch. And we'll call it get branch, I don't know, uh, test Eric. And then I'm going to check out that branch, test Eric. And now I'm going to make a change to something. So I don't know. We'll take a look at our source folder. I'm going to look at our components. Uh, let's see here. We can even go into the app view file and look at the header or views that we have set up. All right, so in the home view here, I have Eric Conduit. So I'm going to just change this name from Eric Conduit to Eric Conduit uh, YouTube Test. And I'm going to save it. And if we look down here at our at our bash cell, um, if you remember Git workflow, if I go git status, you can see here I have my change in here. So I can go at git add. And then I'm going to git commit. And I'm going to say updated home. And then that in part of this app itself, it runs this pre-commit hook on every commit, which is, don't worry about this, this is just the way it works. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and push this up. So I'm going to push it, push du u for origin, and then it's going to be on this branch, which if I just, if I hit git push, it tells me, yeah, git push dash u, and I'm going to put origin and test Eric, it's the name of the branch. And what this is doing is it's pushing it up to my branch. And I'll just put in my password here. Great, so I went ahead and did it. Now if I see here, I have my new test Eric branch. I'm going to compare and pull it. And I don't want to go back to the GoThinkster. I'm going to put it to my own branch here. I'm going to create the pull request. And you can see here it's checking. Um, I have no conflicts. Now right now, I don't have the uh, circle CI setup. So I'm going to set that up for you guys. So I'm going to go to app. And what you need to do is click on add project. So first sign in and it's going to ask you for your GitHub. You can set up your GitHub credentials when you sign up for the first time. And we say here's the view real world app. I'm going to click set up project. And it tells you circles it helps you build ship code faster to, th to kick things off, add a config.yaml file to your project and start building. And I'll show you guys the YAML file I created in a second. So I'm going to leave it on Linux and I'm going to use Node. And what it tells me here is I need to create a folder called CircleCI and file config.yaml. So I already did that and for the sake of time I created the CircleCI file in YAML. And then it says populate the config.yaml with the contents of the sample file below. So I went ahead and modified the sample file below, and I'll show you guys what I did here. So if we look in the sample file, and by the way, the link for this will be in the description below. So I have version 2, and then I have this Docker build image. So I'm using Node 10.8.0. I have this repo. What's first going to do is going to check out of GitHub the whole code. And then it's going to restore the cache. So basically, it's going to, to see if there if there's anything in this checksum package JSON. So it's taking the checksum of the package JSON file and it's seeing if that's in the cache somewhere. If not, it files back to v1 dependencies. Then I'm running the yarn install, which basically is like npm install. So I'm installing all the node modules, and then I'm running a build on it. Then I'm going to save my cache. So I'm going to save everything in the cache for my node modules the dist folder, the package JSON, the Firebase JSON, which I had set up earlier, which I'll talk about in a moment, and the Firebase RC. And then I'm saving that as this circle branch key and environment branch key, which is a, kind of an environmental branch. And then I'm running this test called the yarn run test unit, so I can make sure all my unit tests pass. So for I have also this other task for this deploy job, and that's where I restore the cache. I run, I just to check things out, I run this PWD. I install Firebase, which is a Firebase tool. 
and then I run this npm run Firebase deploy and I send over the token and I'll show you guys how I set that up. So uh, essentially I'm running all the tests and then I'm doing a deploy. And so this is the workflow. I do the build job, deploy job for it. So I went ahead and merged the pull request and we'll see what it does here. If I look at my circle CI, I have this master and for master deploy is running. This master deploy is running. And if I click on it, I could see what it's doing. It ran this, it set up the environment, checked out the cord, restoring the cache, and then runs the yarn install. Yuns runs the yarn run build. And then it tries to run the unit tests. You see that all of them pass, which is perfect. If we go back to our uh, if we go back to our jobs, we can see the next job is this one right here, which by the way, these all these other ones I did yesterday just for testing it out. And so now it's signing up, spinning up the environment. It's restoring the cache, which built, it gets all these folders, the node module, disk, package, Fireboss, Firebase. And then the show directory, you can see that I'm in the circle CI folder. It's installing Firebase. Now it's running this deploy master to Firebase. So went ahead and deployed it. And everything passed. And you can always check to see, take a look to see what it did. And if I go to my web page and refresh it, cool. So now you can see it's been updated. So really to set up Circle CI, you just need to create the Circle CI folder. Well, first go to Circle CI and create an account with it. And it'll automatically ask you for permissions to set up with GitHub when you create a new account with them. Then it'll give you a, uh, when you go to add project here and you set up project, it'll ask you for your configuration. I just did Linux and Node on mine. And then it will give you a sample uh, CircleCI YAML file. You can use this one or use mine if you like. Like I said, it's in the description. After you set up the project, then every time you deploy to master, it'll run the deploy, or every time you push to master, it'll run this deploy to Firebase. Um, otherwise, if you just run, um, if you if you just create a pull request, it'll actually show you uh, the tests being run. So let's create another pull request, and I'll see if we can see the tests being run. So I'm going to get checkout master. I'm going to pull from master just to get the latest changes we just did. I'm going to create a new branch called test Eric 2. I'm going to check out that branch Eric 2. Uh, oops, dash 2. And now I'm going to make a quick change. So we'll go back to that home again. That view for home. I'm just going to put test one after the end of it, I'm going to save it. I'm going to add it. I'm going to commit it. It's going to run its quick lint stage and and uh, everything it does there. And I'm going to push it. Once again, I'm going to have to set up the upstream for it. So I can just copy and paste this or that should be fine. And I'm going to put in my passwords. And I went ahead and sent it off, go back to GitHub. Here's the new pull request. I'll make sure I do it against my own repo. And once I create the pull request, so you can now see now since circle CI is set up, it has the circle CI build job pending. So now I can wait to see if the tests pass and if they fail, then obviously I wouldn't want to try to merge this. So we can click on details while it's running and then take a look at what it's doing. See, it set up the environment. Now it's running the yarn build. And then after this, it'll go ahead and run the saving the cache and then it'll try to run the tests. So we'll see that happen in a second. Yarn run tests. There it is and everything passed. So if we go back to my GitHub, which I'll click back here, you can see the branch has no conflicts with the base. If I refresh it here, everything passed. Show all checks, your test passed in CircleCI, which is really cool. 
And now if I merge this into master, it'll go ahead and deploy uh, to, to Firebase. Now I kind of glossed over how to set up Firebase. So what I did is first, there's pretty good directions if you go to Firebase CLI. So what I would do is make sure I obviously have a Firebase account and then install the Firebase CLI, which is this thing, npm install Firebase tools. And then you do Firebase login to log into Firebase. And then do this Firebase init. And then you can do Firebase hosting, um, which is host. Here it is. So there's this Firebase example, by the way, just use my YAML, but you can run this command Firebase login CI and that'll give you this key. And what you need to do is once you get the key, you'll create a, inside your settings, you'll go to your projects. And then inside your projects, you'll click on this little button here. And then you can do environmental variables and then you can add a new variable. You call it Firebase token and you put the value in there. And then inside your fire, excuse me, inside your package.json, I added a new Firebase deploy, which does runs the Firebase deploy command. And then if you look inside the config YAML file, it runs for deploying, which is right here. I run npm run Firebase deploy, which is in the script file in the package JSON. And then I put two dashes and then I put dash dash token, Firebase deploy token, and then this will insert in the token from Firebase so that way it can be deployed. So I know that's quite a bit. So if this is confusing, make sure you rewatch it a few times. Um, like I said, make sure you download the project and play around with it yourself. It's actually pretty simple once you get uh, to understand it all. But that's that's pretty much it. So um, you, you have, after you do that, then you can go to the Jobs tab after you log into Circle CI, and you can see all your jobs that fail or don't fail, and click on them, and then at any time, like see what happened when any of the commands were being ran, and you can see why they didn't work. Like this one failed because uh, it couldn't run the token. Something was wrong with the Firebase deploy, and it didn't work. So I hope you guys uh, hope that helps you guys out a little bit. So you definitely this is an example of just um, deploying every time you go to master, but you certainly could do something where you only deploy if you merge into uh, like develop or different branch, and then you can set up some kind of staging environment or development or QA environment. You see here branches only master. If I put develop, then that means this deploy job would only be ran on when things are merged into develop um, or committed into develop. So th there's a lot of flexibility here. I was pretty uh, I was pretty impressed by Circle CI. I think you guys should check it out. Make sure you click on the link in the description below to Circle CI if you want to sign up for it, and uh, that will uh, that will help me out. Thanks.